welcome back to the channel. Um, so, Mr. Talbot Maths, back going through again some different topics for revision. I'm also going to go through, like I did last time, for um, the stream prior to paper two. Just some general advice on things that can be helpful to settle yourself down before uh, you're doing paper three. Okay, now if you have a look top right, you can see that we've only got a little over 12 hours. There's not long to go. You know that anyway. I don't need to tell you. Um, you know it's tomorrow. Um, you've done all, all your revision, or as much as you can up until now. You've done your plan. Um, you know, so you, you've done you've done all your revision as you should have done, or as well as you can do up to now, which is fantastic. Now this is just the last kind of push, really, isn't it? Or this is might be the point where you just think, right, I've done all the revision I can. I just want to watch a video. Somebody else showing me some different questions, going through some more stuff, just so that actually I know that I know what I'm doing, but also maybe there's a bit of advice they can give me about um, what to do the night before. Okay, so first thing we're going to look at is writing 45% as a decimal. We're going to go through these starter questions first of all. These questions I've got here as well, these from the start of the paper, okay? So I've chosen these from the start of, I think, foundation papers here at the start, or higher papers. They're a bit of a mix of both, okay? So have a look through those. See what you can do. You've obviously got your calculator, so use it. Hopefully there's not too much um, that you can see through here. Right, I think this is on private for some reason, so I need to edit this so it's public. Right, so I've just changed that to public, so hopefully some people will see it now, but you might see it afterwards, you might not. That was my fault, I had the, the stream set to private. So hopefully people can see it now. I will just check to see if I can find it. Amateur, setting it to private. I think that's because, well, last one of the last streams I did, I had it set to, to private because it basically paused halfway through. Now this time, it hasn't paused, I've just set it to private. Okay, let me just check. Should be able to come up now, hopefully. I think it has. Uh, but quite a lot of people probably won't be aware that it is on. Anyway, people can watch it back later. It doesn't matter. Right, so 45% as a decimal. I'll start going through these questions. So 45% as a decimal. To get from 45% to a decimal, you want to divide by 100. Okay, um, now if you've got your calculator, that's quite easy. So I'll just grab my calculator. Um, alternatively, you might be able to, if you've got the percentage button on your calculator, this is an old one, like I said last time, it doesn't have the percentage button. Okay, I don't think, well it does, sorry. So 45 shift percent button equals, gives it to me as a fraction, S to D, decimal 0 0.45. Okay. Right, if you're just joining the stream, people, I am going to be giving some advice, tips as well, very shortly, on just ways to settle yourself down, calm yourself down for the exam, and just some recommended tips to make sure you're in the best position when you get into, into the exam room. So, first one, we've got 0 0.45. The next question says, use your calculator to work this out. So, you've just got to be able to find these buttons on your calculator, essentially. Square root 196. Now the next bit you've got to do is make sure you come out of the square root. Okay, you don't write 196 plus 29 all underneath the square root. So plus, press the right hand button on the D-pad, plus 29 does it for you. And now this should look exactly the same on the calculator as it does on the paper. Next one, 4 to the power of 5. That gives me 1,024. Make sure you use the power button, which is here. Okay. Circle the largest number. So, what you want to do here is, it's all about basically your place value. So what we want to do is we want to look at, what well, they all start with four, so then go into your tenths. Five, five, five. The tenths are all fives. Then go into your hundredths. That's zero. That would be zero, but it doesn't have anything after it, so it is zero. Um, that is one, so that's higher. That's six, so that's higher. So that is higher than all of them, 4.56, so that's my answer there. 
Okay, on the next one says write 4.5 times 10 to the power of 5 is an ordinary number. So again, you're going to use a calculator. 4.5 times 10 to the power of 5 gives me 450,000. So 450000. Unbelievably, these are all from calculator papers. That's from a calculator paper. The first one's from a calculator paper. All of these you can do on your calculator so far, pretty much, apart from maybe the largest number one. Okay, now the next one to look at, as me, Beth and Callum share a flat, the monthly rent is £760. They share the rent in the ratio 2 to 3 to 3. So, two boxes I'm going to do, and that is for Asmi, and then three boxes, three boxes there, three boxes here. Now, the second lot of three, sorry, the first lot of three boxes is the second name. So, first number, first name, second number, second name. So, that's Beth, last number, last name, so Callum. And they're sharing the rent in this ratio of £760. So that whole thing there must be 760 So what I now want to do is split 760 up into all these boxes. So 760 divided by 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, to find out what one part or one box is. 760 divided by 8 is 95. So I'm going to go through, I'm going to put 95, quite small, into each of these boxes. Okay, there we go. Now, how much does Beth pay for rent each month? Beth is this one, so 95 times by 3 will give me the answer. 285. So, how much does Beth pay? 285 pounds is my answer. Okay, super. Right, now, what I'm going to do before I go any further is I just want to make some notes, basically, and and give us some general advice on things that we can be doing um, so that we're prepared for the exam. Okay? So, I'm just going to write it, prepared. How can we be prepared for this exam? Now, there's a few different facets to this. Obviously, revision. Now, <laughs> to pass the test, or to do as well as you want to on the test, you need to have revised, which you've probably done most of that already. So, to be prepared, you need to have done some revision. That goes without saying. All of us have. If you're here, you've done revision. You're doing revision now. So that's good. Right, the next thing you want to do, get enough sleep. Make sure you get enough sleep in the evening, okay? So, you know, don't stay up. If you normally stay up till like 12, 1, 2 in the morning, don't, if you, if you can help it, don't do that tonight, yeah? Try and get in bed early enough so you can wake up, you've had a good amount of sleep, okay? Right, the next thing, equipment. You need all your equipment, okay? You need to sort it out. You don't want to be rushing around tomorrow. You don't want to be trying to find things. You don't want to have to, to go to the maths office and ask for a protractor, a compass, a ruler, a calculator, anything. You want to have it all there, ready with you, sorted, okay? So revision, sleep, equipment, okay? And I'm also going to put eat. Make sure you eat breakfast. Okay, have your breakfast, have some food. So you're not in there hungry. Um, if, you, if you are hungry, you'll, you'll end up with generally low blood sugar. You will, you know, you can, as most people know, get frustrated, angry a little bit. And you don't want to be getting frustrated with the questions. You want to be calm. You want to be relaxed. You want to take it step by step and work it out as you go. Okay. If you're angry or frustrated because of low blood sugar, that's going to make your life a little bit more difficult and more difficult than it needs to be. And the next thing I'm going to put is, and this is probably dependent on the weather and where you are, make sure you're hydrated. Yeah, goes without saying, you hear all the time that you should be drinking this much water, that much water, everything else. Now, especially in the in you know where I am um, in the UK. I mean, the, the, you know, the Greater Manchester area, it's boiling hot at the minute. It, it's really hot. So if it's hot where you are, make sure you're hydrated, make sure you've got water. And if you're allowed to take bottles of water in, um, you might be allowed to take them in with the, with the labels off. 
Um, I can't remember exactly, you will probably know, having done more exams very recently than myself, whether you're allowed to. If you are, make sure you can take one in. If you're not, make sure you've had quite a bit to drink beforehand, all right? Okay, right, so they're my top tips to be prepared. Now, the other thing you could do is, in terms of last minute revision, what might you want to do? Okay, so there's a couple of things. Mr. Talbot Maths, you're here, you're watching something, you're going through things now, which is great, and you're not having to really do any of it, you're just watching me do it, and making sure that actually you understand it, and you could have done that. The other thing I would recommend is past papers. The more practice you can get of past papers, the better. And then the final thing at this stage, in terms of revision, is if you've got flashcards, use your flashcards. Go over them, make sure you know the things, the little things, relatively little things that you need to know, okay? And if you don't have flashcards, you might think, well actually, I could make some flashcards, so you can use them in the car, you can use them before the exam. If you get the bus, you can use them on the bus, you can use them in the morning, if you wake up early, things like that. So you, they're just nice and easy and accessible things you've got there. Hi, Tanisha, in the chat. Um, nice to see you um, in the chat. Great. It's nice to see that you know, you're know you watching as well. I, I can see you saying hi. You don't have to say it a hundred times, but if you want to, you feel free. Um, so they're my top tips. Last minute revision, what I would do as well. Uh, there's also some other recommended websites on there that you can have a look at and use if you want to. And you will have been going to other websites yourself in your own revision. Okay. With revision, it's whatever works best for you. Okay, right, so I'm going to put those to one side, and now what I'm going to do is carry on with a little bit more questions and revision. And you can watch, follow along, and think about them as I'm going through them. So, these questions. Now the first one there, and this is part of answering the questions, knowing what topic you're doing. So, this topic is called completing the square, okay? We need to write this quadratic, quadratic is a power, uh, a polynomial where the highest power, the highest uh, indice or index is 2. So we need to write that in this format. Now the way to do that is you have your x and we've got minus 2. So we need to half the minus 2, half the number in front of the x, make that minus um, 1x or just minus, um, minus 1 because you'll see... So I'm going to have x minus 1 squared. Now that will give me x squared minus 1x minus 1x. So that's minus 2x. And then minus 1 times minus 1 is positive 1. Yes, Tanisha, this is higher. It's a mix of higher and foundation, but I've, I've, this is pretty much higher, these questions on this page. Um, and I think the other page I've got as well will be higher, yeah. Um, so, yeah, anything from now on, yes, is higher. So x minus 1 all squared. Now... If I do minus 1 times minus 1, I get positive 1. Now I need to take that off, because I want this bracket to just be these first two terms. So minus 1, okay, so that will give me x squared, minus 1x minus 1x, gives me x squared minus 2x. Negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. Take away that 1, I've now got this. Now I've then got to bring down this minus 1 as well. Now that gives me x minus 1 all squared minus 2. And that's my answer, that's the complete square. So A is negative 1, B is negative 2. So I'll go through that one more time very quickly. So you half the number in front of your X, that goes in your brackets. Okay. You then subtract um, the number that you've halved here in your brackets, so that squared is 1. So you take that square number away, and then you bring down your other number here. Okay. So bring down the minus 1. Uh, combine your two numbers here, your integers, and you'll get negative 2. So x minus 1 squared minus 2. Hence or otherwise, write down the coordinates of the turning point. Now the turning point, because this is a, a, a quadratic, and it's a positive quadratic, it's going to look like a U-shape. Now the turning point is the bottom here. So we need to minimise what y is. Now y is this, which is the same as up here. So y is x minus 1 squared minus 2. Okay. Now to minimise that, to make this bracket as small as possible, the smallest square number you can have is zero. Okay, You can't square a number and get a negative answer. So that's going to be zero. 
which means to make that zero, x has to be one. So to make that bracket zero, x is one. Now this bit, if this bracket is zero, y will be zero minus two, okay? Zero minus two is negative two, so y is negative two. We need the coordinates, so it's gonna be one, negative two, okay? One in here gives us zero, which will make that as small as possible, and then zero take away two, y is negative two, so that's our answer. Now, the next question here, so it's proved that the sum of three consecutive even numbers is always a multiple of six. Now these proof ones can be a little bit tricky and, well, if you don't know what you're doing at least. So the, the thing to remember and the thing to know with these is how to write down your odd numbers and how to write down your even numbers. So an even number will be 2n, where n is just any integer, any whole number, okay? So if that's an even number, then 2n plus 1 must be an odd number, because you've added 1 to an even number, so now you've got an odd number. Okay? So that's odd, and that's even. And that's the bit you need to remember. So, consecutive means one after the other, even numbers. So, sum means add. We've got to add together three even numbers, one after the other. So I'll start with 2n, and then I'm going to add 2n... The even number after 2n would be 2n add 2, because you need to go 2 up. If we go 1 up, we end up with an odd number. So 2n add 2, plus 2n, go 2 more up, add 4. So add those three things together, and we will get 2n add 2n add 2n is 6n, 2 add 4 is 6, which equals 6 lots of n plus 1, if you factorise it, uh, and then you want to probably want to write a statement at the end, or you can use this square, which basically means you've proved it. Okay? You might want to write at the start as well, let n be an integer. So we know that's a whole number, so then it all works. Because if n isn't a whole number, then this kind of all falls down. So there you go. That's all we need to do for that question. Okay, the next one is two cylinders, A and B, and they're mathematically similar. Okay? Now, as soon as I see that word, I'm thinking length scale factor, area scale factor, volume scale factor, especially as I've got two 3D shapes. Could be any of them. So, they're similar. Now, the height of cylinder B is twice the height of cylinder A. So, this is double the height of this. So, if that's x, this would be 2x. That makes my length scale factor times 2. So my length scale factor is 2. Now, from there, I probably want to work out the area scale factor and the volume scale factor. Okay, so the area scale factor is your length scale factor squared. So to get from there to there, you square it. 2 squared is 4. Now to get from your length scale factor to your volume scale factor, you've got to cube it. Because volume is three dimensions, so you cube it. Okay. Oh! Uh, Bombers, uh, you're welcome. Okay. Similar shapes are a bit difficult, yeah. So with similar shapes, it's all about scale factor, uh, length scale factor, area scale factor, volume scale factor. Once you've got those three down and that information, actually, it's, I would say, generally relatively straightforward. All right. So sometimes they'll give you the length scale factor. If they don't, you've got to go backwards. So you'd have to square root to get back to the length scale factor. Now, I'll carry on, 2 cubed is 8 for the volume scale factor. Okay. Now, like I just said there, if they give you the area one, square root it, get the length one. You can only go, you can't go straight from area to volume scale factor. You have to go back to length scale factor, then cube it. Likewise, you can't go from volume scale factor straight to area scale factor. You have to go back to length scale factor and then on to area scale factor. Right, now it says the total surface area, so that's our area scale factor of A, is 180 centimetres squared. Calculate the total surface area of cylinder B. So to go from this surface area to this surface area, we need to times by the area scale factor, which is 4. That will give us our answer. So 180 times by 4. Okay. 180 times by 4. You probably do this in your head. But one of my suggestions would be, you've got your calculator, use it, even for something relatively simple like that. 
or might be relatively simple. Okay, so 720 centimetres squared is our answer there. Okay. Right, I hope that has helped, um, Tanisha, in terms of explanation, um, and made it a little bit more straightforward. There are some trickier ones, definitely, like there are with everything, with similar shapes, and I suppose those would be the ones um, where you've, you've basically got the comb with the top cut off, haven't you? Um, so they can be a little bit trickier because yeah, um, you've got to work with two cones and one that you can't see, or when you've got shapes inside of shapes. So when you've got um, similar shapes, but a triangle where it's like inside, if you have something like that, you want to separate them out. So you want to draw two separate shapes. You want to draw smaller triangle and the larger triangle out separately. Because otherwise, what will happen is you'll end up getting this length here. Um, that one will be fine there, but this length here, you won't recognise that. You'll just go from there to there, and then it gets a bit confusing. So separate the shapes out if you've got ones that are inside each other. Did it? Okay. Well, yeah, it could come up in paper three again. Um, yeah. If, 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 yeah, I hope for your sake that it doesn't come up again then if you found it difficult. Um, but yeah, with like I, I went through predictions before, but the thing is with predictions, they could test them again. You never know. Um, okay, right. So, going on to some other questions now. Um, I'm going to have a look at some highest common factor, lowest common multiple. And I've chosen a question. Um, hi, Lucas. Um, in particular, which would probably force you to use Venn diagrams. So, this gives you the highest common factor and lowest common multiple, and you have to write down the two numbers he's thinking of. Okay? So, Kane's thinking of two numbers greater than 10. That bit's important. They put it in bold. Okay, so don't forget that. The highest common factor of my two numbers is 7. The lowest common multiple of my two numbers is 84. So, you could use trial and error here. Okay? The other thing we could do is if, you, if you're uh, familiar with the Venn diagrams, which if you're doing higher, I expect you are, then we've got a Venn diagram here. And the highest common factor means that. The prime factors of this number would go in the centre. Now, 7 is a prime number, so that's just going to go in the centre. So only 7 is going to be in the middle. Now, to work out your lowest common multiple, you times these all the numbers in uh, your Venn diagram. So we know 7 is one of the factors of 84. has to be, because 7 times something times something times something will give us 84, because um, it's in the middle. So... Let's do the prime factor decomposition. Let's break it down. Let's see where we can put our other prime factors um, and to make sure that each of these circles, each of these numbers, is greater than 10. So let's start off with 7 and use your calculator. Start off with 7 because we know that definitely goes in. We've got 12. So 7's prime. I'm going to circle it. Now I'm going to bring this 7 down here. This is the way I like to do it. And hi, Declan. Um, and I'm going to break that 12 up into 3 times 4. So circle my 3. 4 isn't prime, so let's leave that go. Bring the 7 down. Bring the 3 down. Split the 4 up into 2 times 2. Okay, they're both prime, so circle them. Right, so I've got the 7. That's done already. I need to sort the 3 and these two 2s into my Venn diagram here so that each circle is greater than 10. As long as I've got three and two twos in there and nothing else in the middle, it'll be fine. So, if I put, in, at this point, it is a little bit trial and error, but you haven't got many options. So I'll put the three here. Three times seven is 21, that's fine. Um, if I put two twos here, so I end up with four times by seven, which is 28. So we get 21 and 28. Seven times two is 14, times two, 28. Three times seven, 21. Now you've got to be careful here, you can't put a 2 on each side, because if you do that, then there's a 2 in both, which means it goes in the middle. So you've got to be careful with that. Okay, next question to look, out is, look at, or not look out, look at is angles in polygons. Okay, now we've got a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 sided shape. Okay, so there will be in any polygon the number of triangles that would fit in that shape is two less than the number of sides. So if we do five, take away two, we get three triangles in that shape. I can show you those now if you don't believe me. You probably do, but if you don't, I'll show you. So there's one there, um, 
And then there's two more here. So one, two, three triangles in there. In a triangle is 180 degrees, so three lots of 180 is going to be 540. So the total of all of these angles is 540. So 540, subtract 95, subtract 86, subtract 123, subtract 117 will give me x. One, one, nine. Look at the question, does that look sensible? Yes, it does. Okay, if you're getting something like, you know, uh, 20 degrees or 370, which is bigger than 360, then you're going wrong somewhere. Okay, um, yo, EM, um, <laughs> in the chat, hello. Um, okay, super, so the next question, model car has a length eight centimeters. The scale of the model is one to 50. Work out the length of the real car. So, 1 to 50, this is basically using your ratio or proportion essentially. So, the scale of the model, the lower one is obviously the model. So, we need to get this up to 8, times that by 8, times that by 8. That will give us our answer. Now, I think I did get this from a foundation paper, but these skills will be useful for bearings as well, which could also be on the higher paper. And actually, if I turn over in a second, I have got a bearings question. Okay, so 8 to 400, the length of the real car would be 400 centimetres. Um, it says give the answer in metres, so that's 4 metres, because 100 centimetres is a metre. If you, yeah, if you, centi means 100, okay? Right, now the next question, what exam board is this for? So this is for, basically, it's AQA, Adexcel, OCR. I've got questions from each of them. Okay, so I hope that explains, and the thumbnail probably gives it away as well, because I've, I've tried to put all of them on there. Uh, right, um, this is a bearings question. Now, I just need to grab my tractor. You know what, I'm going to use this one. This is one that a student made for me. Put my, uh, my name on it in, like, what looks to be, well, I would love to say in diamonds, although I'm not quite sure it is, but we'll have a go with it anyway, it's the one I've got to hand. Uh, right, make sure you don't do this with your protractor, because you won't be allowed to take it in the exam. So, I'm measuring the wrong way to start off with. Uh, you need your ruler as well, because we will have to do some positions probably. The accurate scale drawing shows the positions of boat A and boat B. Um, it's DSF, uh, speak to me tomorrow, or email me, okay? Um, right, boat C is on a bearing of 65 degrees from A, so I'll put that, make sure you put um, the centre on the cross and you're measuring from the zero, so in my case that's outside and I'm going to 65 degrees, so keep that still, going on the outside from zero, 65 is about here, okay, right, so I'm going to put a little dot there and then I can draw my line through it. Um, I'll do that now. You use a pencil when you do this. I'm just doing it in red so you can see it easier. Okay, so we'll do that. Um, boat C is on a bearing of 315 degrees from B. Now, my uh, protractor won't measure 315 degrees around. It'll only go to 180. So, what I need to do is we go clockwise, don't we, for bearings from the north line. Now, if it's 315 degrees clockwise, then that will be 360 minus 315. How many degrees would that be anti-clockwise? Let's have a look. 45 degrees anti-clockwise. Okay. So from B. Can't really see. There's too many uh, diamonds on my, uh, my protractor here. Right. 45 degrees, so from zero on the inside here to 45 is going there. So now I'll get my ruler again and then join up that to a point. I've just switched the light on. Maybe you can see better now, maybe not. There you go, that's. Should have put this on to start off with, shouldn't I? I always forget to turn the light on. Um, right, so this is the point here. It says on the diagram, mark the cross position of boat C on the diagram, there you go, so cross there, um, and then I could put point C there as well, okay, now that's 45 degrees, which means this 
is 315. You have to go clockwise with your bearings, and that is my 65 degrees. Also notice three digits always for bearings, okay? So I could put that as 0, 45 degrees anti-clockwise, although technically it's not a bearing. Okay, right, um, that's as much as I was planning on going through, but I do just want to go back to this because people have joined later on. So these are basically my suggestions in terms of preparing for tomorrow because you've done your revision, you've watched, um, you've, you've done your own revision as well in class, at home. That's, that's the big bulk of the work, the majority of the work, you've already done it, okay? But now, you know, obviously it's important um, you could rub it out tire, it doesn't matter, as long as you've got the cross in the right place, and as long as you've got that cross in the right place, it doesn't matter. Um, so you don't have to rub it out, no. Um, I'll just, sorry, I'll carry on with this. So, yeah, you've done your revision, that's the main bit. And, and in terms of being prepared for tomorrow, what are the best things you can do? Okay, because you don't want to go in there stressed, you want to go in there relaxed, comfortable, confident, um, as confident as you can be, and, and stress-free as you can be. So, you've done the revision, that's the main bit. Okay, big tick. Sleep is the next thing I spoke about earlier. Make sure you get enough sleep tonight. If you go to bed at one midnight, you know, normally, try and make sure you get some more sleep tonight, okay? You, you go to bed at like a reasonable time. 10, half 10, 11, something like that. I wouldn't say go to bed later than 11, definitely not. Um, equipment, make sure you pack your equipment tonight. It's all sorted and you're ready to go. So you're not rushing around and if you're rushing around, you're gonna forget things. You're not rushing around tomorrow, that's important. Um, the next thing, eat, eat breakfast, okay? Make sure you have something. And the main reason for that is if you have a low blood sugar, like I mentioned earlier, you can get quite angry, you know, or frustrated quite easily, all right? So if you don't eat, that could happen and you don't wanna be sitting there getting frustrated with a question. The best way to tackle it is being calm, composed, um, and taking your time with it, all right? And understanding that actually some questions are difficult. They're going to be. You need to do what you can do. So like with that question earlier, um, I suggested with the scale factors, similar shapes. I did uh, length scale factor straight away, and then before I read the rest of the question, I did area and volume scale factor, and then the rest of the question was really easy. So you don't want to be frustrated. You want to have eaten. You want to be you know, comfortable. You also want to be hydrated. Now, I don't know where everybody is, but where I am, it's really hot. It's really hot. And if you can take a bottle of water in without the, um, the label around the outside, then I would suggest to do that if it's hot as it is where I am, where you are. If you can't do that, make sure you've had a drink, make sure you're hydrated before you go in there, um, because again, that will help. Now, the, uh, the alternative side of that is you don't want to drink too much water and be needing to go to the toilet. So, you know, you've got to have a balance, all right? Um, and also, I should add to this, go to the toilet before the exam. That's a good one, isn't it? So, I'll write that down. Go to the toilet before the exam, okay? Because again, you don't want to be wasting time having to go to the toilet, someone following you to the toilet and everything else. It takes quite a bit of time. Um, unnecessary time as well that you don't want to waste. Last minute revision as well, in terms of what I recommend. Mr. Talbot Maths, I've done a video tonight. There's videos that I've done in the past. I've done other revision sessions. I've gone through topics under my live streams on the channel. So if there's any topics there you want to go through. I, I do them more in depth because they were hour long sessions and I go through just that topic. So if there's something on there you want to have a look at, of course you can do. Past papers, that's probably, <clears throat> if you want to do some written revision, best revision you can do at the moment, I would say. Uh, but of course, it's late, all right? And you might be wanting to just wind down now, which is absolutely fine. And whatever makes you feel the most comfortable tomorrow, I would recommend. Um, the other thing, if you did want to do something, is use flashcards, if you've got them, because you can use them before the exam. Um, you can use them in the car, you can use them when you go to bed, you can use them when you wake up in the morning. You can use them basically any time, they're really accessible. Now. The alternative of that, if you haven't done those, you might want to do those just to help you remember certain things. Maybe, you know, simple things, maybe like the area trapezium. Maybe the sine cos tan graphs. Maybe you think, actually, I'm not sure about them, I want to write them down. Maybe transformations, maybe you want to go through those and make sure you know what each of the transformations of functions do. So like f of x plus a, what would that do to your function? Okay, it would move it left by a, whatever a is, okay? 
um, it would subtract basically a from all your x coordinates okay um, but yeah you could write things like that down and they would be my, my top tips um, for revision and, and for, for, for relaxing yourself and getting yourself in the right frame of mind and, and the final thing I want to say um, before you do go um, is basically good luck okay go in there make sure you've got a positive attitude positive mindset you can do this all right it will go well um, and you will get what you want what you need what you deserve to get after doing the work you've done okay right um, so yeah I will leave you to it I won't take up any more of your revision time or relaxation time before tomorrow you know your, your winding down time um, good luck um, and yeah uh, I look forward to, to seeing and hearing hopefully how people have done um, and if you need any other help or you want help afterwards or with A-level things or anything else afterwards comment it on the channel on any of these videos and I will go through it last thing to say make sure you like the video much appreciated and if you haven't already subscribe to the channel and there is in the bottom left hand corner if you would like to there's a QR code that you can scan or it's in the description to buy me a coffee if you'd like to okay goodbye everybody and good luck for tomorrow Bye-bye.